recognising that the loss of revenue through tax evasion and tax avoidance schemes costs more to the exchequer than benefit fraud. What policies would you advocate to deal with this problem, particularly because it affects BME communities most? Okay. Let's start this one with Sir Peter. Yeah, I mean, I think you've got to recognise that uh, as a city council, as a mayor of the city, there is uh, some influence you can have on what's happening at a national level, but uh, it's it's very limited. Um, and uh, I, mean, I actually felt that when I was an MP, but uh, <laughs> as a mayor, you know, you're even further from it. But the fact is that whatever the government, uh, I don't think that any has been. Uh, as keen uh, on um, actually dealing with those who evade taxes, the wealthy, the big, the big firms, uh, as they have been on hitting the ordinary people uh, and to make them certain that you know they uh, they, they, they they can have benefit for. It. And as you well suggested, uh, it's the big bucks that we lose in tax avoidance uh, and comparatively small amounts uh, that are lost in. Uh, uh, in, uh, in benefit fraud. Having said that, uh, I think that uh, it's um, something that uh, we, uh, as a, um, a local level, ought to be continuing to say to them that they have their priorities wrong. And I will certainly be continuing to do that. As I said earlier on, I've never just told the party line, and I'll be saying that to any government, even one that's uh, made up with, uh, with, uh, uh, with my own party. Okay, straight through to Adrian. Thank you. Um, as Peter said, we're not going to have in the city a lot of opportunity to, to change the, um, the taxation system and to, to start chasing errant taxpayers. Um, one thing I do worry about with the benefits system is that we punish people too quickly. Um, and uh, I, I agree that there are people avoiding taxes. But I also think there are people on the benefits system that suffer. Um, unnecessarily, and I know this from personal experience of, uh, of recently, um, where somebody I, I was very close to wasn't able to sign on because they were very, very ill, they've since passed away, um, and because they couldn't sign on they were sanctioned and they were stopped from being able to get their benefit, which also stopped the housing benefit being paid and council tax being paid. Um, and meant that they went into huge arrears. Um, I don't. I think we're we're too soft on the tax evaders and too hard on the people at the other end of the scale who are on benefits. Unfortunately, there's absolutely very little that a, a, a local mayor can do um, other than make complaints to the to central government. Um, I wish there was something that we could do, but I don't think that's going to be within the remit. Okay, um, Tim? Oh, sorry. No, just, I, was, I would actually agree with Sir Peter on this one. If you're the mayor of, of a city like Leicester, you should make Leicester's voice heard, especially, you have large companies, multinational companies, and you might be surprised for me to say this as a conservative, avoiding tax, and then they chase the little person. That cannot, in a fair society, that cannot be right. So, hoping for a conservative government, obviously, as city mayor, or even not as city mayor, I have my local MP, lobby them. Make sure they hear, you've got three Labour MPs in your city currently, lobby them. Make sure your, your voice is heard, and that they lobby whichever government is in. If it's Labour, Conservative, or Hun. Make sure that voice is heard. Thanks, Tim. Mm. So, um, yeah, a lot of these tax avoiders are uh, high street chains, like names that we all know and we all, we all recognise. Um, and a lot of these high street chains also um, aren't actually, uh, they're, they're not signed up to uh, giving people the living wage. All right. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to encourage more local businesses like independent shops and, uh, and actually negotiate trade deals with local farms and local suppliers to help, to help build a, a self-sufficient local economy. Because I think that from, from a local basis, as everyone said, 
who don't really have much power um, you know, o over central government apart from lobbying. Um, but at the same thing, I think that that doesn't mean that, they, that people should count us out. I think that what we should do, um, both from a council and also from an individual people perspective, is, uh, is really enable um, local, local communities and local shops to, uh, um, and by, by encouraging them and from a council perspective, um, yeah, negotiate those kind of trade deals to make, mean that it's easier for local shops to, um, to sell local, um, local goods. Okay, the last person is Avatar. Uh, well, as has already been stated, the mayor has no real power in this. Uh, everyone agrees it's wrong, but nothing is done. Uh, and why is nothing done? Because of the system, uh, of the party system. The system that, that these all, all these candidates belong to allows the government to make these rules and we have no say on it. If we have a proper direct democracy, we could demand that these tax dodges are brought to a cast. We, no, we, we have no power. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I want you to vote for an independent. I want you to help me smash the system, the party system, that allows the parties to argue amongst themselves on investment stuff, uh, all the while letting the rich get off scot free. I'm very concerned to hear that somebody who's putting himself up as a potential mayor of the city will turn out and say they have no real power. The people who vote you in are giving you power and you guys have no power to do certain things, I'm very concerned. I know maybe it's on certain issues, but we need people, for true leadership, we need somebody who can stand in power, who can stand for their people. So I'm hearing people saying, well, there's nothing much we can do, but you want people to vote you? It's ridiculous. That's what I wanted to say, just in reference to that. And I think this needs to be addressed. So all the promises you make, you're just gonna turn around and say at the end of the day, oh, we didn't really have much power over it. It was, it was over our head and scapegoats and try and push on somebody else for a different reason. This has to change. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, fine, sorry. It's very concerning. <clears throat> Were you relating that question, that statement to the last question being answered in yes, terms of the tax revenue? Okay. If I can answer, I think probably for all of us, I, mean, I think what we're saying is that this is, a, this is one of the areas that we do not have some, where a mayor does not have some power. But there are many other areas, I think we all would all agree, where the mayor does have some power. That's why, for different reasons, you want to do it. Yeah, that, that question or that argument needs to go to the hustings when you're looking at the party political candidates, the, the people that are standing for MPs, yes. rather than to people that are standing for local elections. Um, we would love to have the power to raise tax for Leicester. Yeah, we would. Be fabulous. <laughs> 